The Snap 6 series is the latest mid-range processor that Qualcomm offers and it's not just any mid-range processor. A lot of popular mid-range choices have already released with the Snapdragon 680 processor. Some of those popular names are the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 and the Realme 9i both competing in a similar price bracket. So without any further ado, let's get started and dive into it to answer the question if you should get a phone with the Snapdragon 680 in it or not. Let's start from the specs. The Snapdragon 680 is an octa-core processor with a 6 nanometer fabrication process. It has 4 cores, Cryo 265 Gold, Cortex A73, clocked at 2400 MHz, and 4 efficiency cores which are Cryo 265 Silver based on Cortex A53 and are clocked at 1800 MHz respectively. The GPU used in this processor is the new Adreno 610 which is based on the previous Adreno 600 architecture. It supports up to DirectX 12 and Vulkan 1.1. The clock speeds of Adreno 610 however are unknown but you can expect just a tad bit better performance in terms of gaming compared to the previous Snapdragon 665. It uses the Hexagon 686 as the neural processing unit and can support up to 1080p at 60fps of video playback and 1080p at 60 frames per second as the maximum supported video recording. So the camera and ISP is not the strongest link of this processor at all. It uses the X11 modem by Qualcomm and with no 5G support and up to 390 megabits per second downloads and 150 megabits per second upload risk speeds respectively. Talking about benchmarks, it boasts around 372 on single core performance sensing Geekbench and a multi-core score of 1519 on N22 V9. The benchmark score averagely was around 240k and a maximum of 255k which puts this processor behind the MediaTek processors of this class and I'm talking about the Helio G96 or G88. Now let's talk about day to day usage and battery life. This is where the Qualcomm Snapdragon 680 claims back most of its territory with a 6 nanometer fabrication process the battery life and efficiency is excellent. It not only beats the likes of the Helio G96 or G88 but outshines them in battery efficiency and thermal performance. It can sustain 80% of its CPU and GPU performance for 40 minutes or more. The apps are fluent and for the price you can't complain much about it. This processor however is not intended for heavy gamers or people who are enthusiastic multitaskers. This performs best for the people who lightly game on their phone and are looking for a reliable processor with great battery life and sustainability. And this is the targeted audience for whom I would recommend this product for. You should not however buy this processor for more than $270. That was it for the video, hope you guys liked it and if you did like the video make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more tech videos like this. My name is Ariz and I'm signing out. Peace.